Hello, and welcome to my beginner's strategy guide for Res Arcana. My name is Sam, and today we're going to cover the four easiest ways to win that every player should know about. This will cover the base game and the Lux and Tenebrae expansion, which are both available to play on Board Game Arena. Res Arcana is a race to 10 points, and the most common mistake I see people make is building too many cards. The true cost of a card is its placement cost, plus two resources, as in, the two resources you don't gain by playing the card instead of discarding it. This means even a free card like Magical Shard will not benefit you until the third round. Although it produces one resource every round, you would gain two immediately anyway by just discarding it. If you are building cards in the third or fourth round that aren't necessary, it's likely you are actually costing yourself resources and time for no benefit. What makes the following strategies so effective is they offer a fast way to get to 10 points and require minimal cards to be played. The first and probably easiest way to win is with the Dragon's Lair. It's available for anyone to get in the first round and produces enough gold that you can win by just buying monuments. The quickest and most common way to get it in the first round is by starting with a mage and magic item that give a resource and then discarding the three cards in your hand for resources. You will often be racing other players to buy the Dragon's Lair, so if you are the first player with the right mage and magic item, then in 99% of cases it will be yours. From the second round onwards, you can start buying monuments. It's pretty flexible what you can take. Starting with a monument that helps you produce gold, like Solomon's Mine, the Library, or Demon Workshop is viable, but I will only get one, as your goal is to get to 10 points, not buy every monument. The best monuments to start with would ideally be the Temple, Dark Cathedral, or Colossus. These offer you more points while also helping produce resources. It's also viable to start with the high point monuments like Great Pyramid or Golden Statue to secure them early. The second ability the Dragon Slayer has is arguably more powerful than producing gold. It allows you to tap a dragon and tap the lair for two points. As the lair provides a discount on building dragons, this is very easy to do. The Bone Dragon only costs two resources to build, and other dragons like Prismatic, Fire or Water only cost three. Having a dragon is not necessary to win, but will help speed up the game. When playing with the lair, always look to take Reanimate. It allows you to turn one resource into two gold, and there aren't many better trades in the game than that. The mages don't matter too much, as long as they give a resource at the beginning. The Witch offers you a similar trade, turning two resources into two gold each turn. The Diviner can be useful for finding a cheap dragon in your deck early. As first player, the only thing you need to watch out for is Sacrificial Dagger. When sacrificing an expensive card like Sea Serpent, Philosopher's Stone, or Wind Dragon, it allows any player to jump ahead and buy the Dragon's Lair in 3 turns, instead of the 4 it usually takes. If you're drafting as first player, it can be a good idea to take Sacrificial Dagger away so no player can deny you the lair. Other cards to look out for are Cheap Dragons and the Chalice of Fire, which will pay for itself very quickly if you manage to build it early. If you're playing the expansion and there is a card in your hand you really want to keep, then it's possible to get the Dragon's Lair with the help of the Disjunction Scroll. Turning your starting gold into four resources allows you to only discard two cards instead of all three. This will add an extra turn before you can get the lair, so it's only worth committing to if your opponent can't beat you in the race. As your turns won't typically take too long when playing with the lair, it's likely you'll be able to pass first to get an extra point and finish the game in the fourth round. The second easy way to win is with the Philosopher's Stone. The stone allows you to transmute one resource type into gold, which you will then use to buy a stack of monument cards all in one go. As the stone gives you one point itself, you'll probably need four to five monuments to reach ten points. Five monuments cost 20 gold, which thanks to the stone is only 20 resources. Adding the cost of the stone, 8, and the cost of using its power, 2, you need a total of 30 resources to reach 10 points most of the time. At a minimum, you will get to 23 resources in the fourth round by doing nothing but discarding cards and taking magic items. The math for that is on the screen. 30 resources is achievable with a little bit of help and there are many cards or combinations of cards that will do the job. Among the best are Corrupt Altar, Horn of Plenty, Vault, Elvish Bow, Alchemist Tower, Jeweled Statuette, and Fiery Whip. 
Basically, if a card is going to give you a resource gain by the fourth round, then it's okay to build. Just keep in mind the true cost, which is its placement cost plus two for not discarding. The Philosopher's Stone can be built in the third or fourth round. There's no need to prioritize building it earlier. If you have the Diviner or Demonologist, you can even discard the stone early, knowing you'll be able to retrieve it later. Once you get to using its power, obviously focus on buying monuments that offer the most points. Great Pyramid, Golden Statue and Dark Cathedral all offer the most value for this. If you do manage to get Dark Cathedral, you can take Illusion as your magic item after you pass to trigger the extra point effect. Small shout out to Athenor, which offers the same ability as Philosopher's Stone in a slightly different way. Athenor is cheaper, but doesn't give a point and is required to be built in round 1 or 2 at the latest. This makes it less reliable as you're not guaranteed to have it in your opening hand and the upfront cost can hurt when you're trying to build your engine. However, it's still a quick and viable way to win in a lot of circumstances. The third easy way to win is with the Catacombs of the Dead. Getting this place of power in the first round is ideal, and the easiest way to do so is with the Transmutation Magic Item. Transmuting your other starting resources to black allows you to have enough to afford it by discarding your entire hand. If your mage is the Witch or Necromancer, then you only need to discard two cards from your hand. It's also possible to build Jeweled Statuette first, while discarding your other two opening cards, which would be the perfect situation. The Catacombs are fairly flexible, as they don't need any investment to generate points. If bought in the first round, and you assume the game will last for 4 rounds, then it's producing 4 guaranteed points for only 9 resources, while also producing 3 black itself. How you get the rest of the points is up to you. Reanimating the Catacombs with either the Magic Item, Witch's Ability, or Chalice of Fire all become very cheap ways to get additional points. You can focus on the Catacombs' second ability, exchanging 5 black for a point, or save up gold to buy a monument by discarding cards or using cards to generate gold. It's likely you'll need a combination of all three to reach 10 points. The Catacombs give you a great head start with cheap and reliable points. The fourth and final easiest way to win only applies to the expansion, and it's with the Temple of the Abyss. If you have three demons, it becomes completely broken, but even only having two can be a real headache to come up against. Its true strength lies in the fact that the place of power itself doesn't need to be tapped to score points, only the demons. Having multiple demons, or even the illusion magic item, allows you to get multiple points each round for little cost. This trait of not having to tap the place of power is only shared by the Dragon Airy, which is completely outclassed due to the much higher cost of dragons. It's not necessary to buy the temple in the first round. The only risk of not doing so is someone else racing you for it, but that can be hard to predict. Instead, it's usually better to build demons first. Homunculus is the best demon for this, offering you a discount on all future demons as well as some much needed resource production. Vortex of Destruction is a bit more expensive, but also offers constant resource production. Cheaper demons like the Chaos Imp and Cursed Dwarven King are also good options. Aim to buy the temple in the second round and start tapping your demons for points. Once you have two or more demons out, you can start looking to get the bulk of your points. Using the first ability of the Temple of the Abyss in tandem with the Reanimate Magic Item or Witch's ability allows you to score points for all your demons twice in the round. If you can do this in back-to-back -back rounds with the Witch or even the Vitality Scroll from Inscription, then the game will be over very quickly. Being able to comfortably play with these four strategies will give you a fighting chance against a player of any skill level. If given the right setup, they can all be unstoppable. While you shouldn't expect to win every game this way, it's useful to know the ins and outs and see what efficient strategies look like. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments. I make strategy videos every week, so if that's the sort of content you enjoy, please consider subscribing. Thanks for watching and good luck.